We are talking about the weapons and technology of World War I right now. Your goal for the screencast is to explain multiple reasons why World War I was so long and deadly. We will start with the rifle, which was the main weapon used by soldiers and deadly up to 600 yards or about a third of a mile away. Next up we've got the machine gun. And this caused a ton of casualties in World War One. It made it very difficult to attack positions because when you're coming across no man's land and there's a machine gun shooting, you know, close to 100 bullets a minute at you, it's going to be very difficult to get across that open exposed ground. However, these also overheated easily and could be a pain to take care of. So when they worked, though, they were extremely deadly. Next up, we have artillery. This caused the most deaths and injuries in World War One and could be shot up to two or three miles. Uh, this was a crucial piece of trench warfare, that initial bombardment that was so stereotypical of, a, of an attack in a trench warfare battle um, was, was a big part of how artillery was used. We also have railroads. Um, this was, again, not a super new piece, but was used in war uh, very differently than it had been in the past. It's used to move around reinforcements, to move around materials, and to mobilize more and more troops. This is particularly important at the beginning of the war. Telephone was also something that was used in World War One. It was okay for communicating within your own lines, but what happens when you go over the top and attack? Do you have guys with these lines of telephone reel coming across, and you're hoping that you know in the in the chaos of battle that these lines last and make it from you know where you are out in exposed ground back to your general? Because if they didn't, then your general would have no idea where you were and how the attack was going. Gas was another weapon used in World War One. It was the first time gas was used in war. Um, it initially was shot out of canisters and then just had to had the winds to carry the gas, but later there were shells that were used that released gas as it was shot. And soldiers were extremely, extremely scared of gas because of the horrible, horrible effects that it had on people, the horrible ways that you died, and then the impact that it would have on survivors. However, very few deaths and casualties from World War One came from gas. That didn't stop soldiers from being extremely scared of it, though. Tanks were also used in World War I for the first time. They were developed in 1916, but started to get used more towards the end of the war. During trench warfare, if you could have something, some big, you know, bullet impenetrable shield to hide behind or to move across no man's land or to crush all the barbed wire, wouldn't that be a useful innovation and invention to have? It certainly was. Airplanes were also used. These were generally smaller planes, and they were used for several things to take pictures of troop movements. Um, there were some duels in the air as well. And if you were a fighter pilot in World War I, you did not have a long life expectancy. The, the people who flew these planes were not survivors of the war, generally. Naval power was also used. Battleships started to be used, and Germans had Unterseebooten, uh, U-boats or submarines, that were, that were very scared, that scared many of the, the Allied powers. Um, if you controlled the ocean with your naval power you would minimize trade in exchange of materials that happened between countries so this could be a crucial part of the war if you could control the sea then you'd make it impossible for people to get goods and material to their allies be it weapons or food or anything else so why was the war world war one so long and bloody that's a great question one of the reasons was the industrial revolution with the larger population that came out of the industrial revolution there are just more soldiers available for reinforcements and for total war with total war meaning that the whole population was involved in the production of the materials for the war. So all of these, this increased number of people who lived out of the Industrial Revolution with the, the spike in population, if they weren't soldiers, they were working in factories and helping, helping mobilize goods and services for the soldiers in the war. Also, the industrial production that came out of the Industrial Revolution, the ability to have these industries and these factories that were very easily converted from you know, creating goods and services that people bought to creating goods of wartime. The new technology also benefited, um, but again, this was only up to a certain point. There were new technological innovations that came out of the Industrial Revolution that benefited the war, um, but th these weren't hugely productive. It was more the population and the production ability that made the war so long and bloody that stemmed from the Industrial Revolution. 
some of this new technology though, such as the railroads and the machine guns and the barbed wire, um, that made it very easy to kill and to defend things, but much harder to attack, which is a theme as we move through World War I. Military problems made the war long and bloody. It was very difficult to communicate with people on your side. There was bad leadership with questionable tactics. Um, generals did not adapt well to new technologies and kept sending people over the top in these kind of semi-suicidal attack strategies. Also, the technology caused some problems as well. Um, as I mentioned before, it was very good for defense and for killing, but it made it very difficult to attack. Also, the sides were very evenly matched. The central powers were outnumbered numerically, but because Germany had so much industrial and military strength, they were able to keep the central powers pretty even with the Allied side until the U.S. entered the war in 1917, and we'll talk more about that later in the unit. So, your goal for the screencast was to explain multiple reasons why World War I was so long and bloody, excuse me, so long and deadly. Hopefully, the new technology and the weapons, as well as the things we talked about at the end of the screencast, will help you do that. If you can say that, great. If not, head back and re-watch parts of the screencast. Thanks.